this sort of stuff is funny to me because this kind of reminds me a little bit of the people that I kind of grew up in in my ends or the people that I kind of grew up with in from ends, right? Or where, where I used to live, where my mum where my mom still lives at the moment. Um, but then just, just generally just kind of represent a lot of like family trauma growing up in the household where basically feelings and emotions aren't really encouraged where you're sort of like told to kind of bottle everything up in one way i'm kind of happy i grew up that way because i'm not some whiny bitch boy like i'm not just always out here crying and complaining and asking people to have sympathy for me and always fucking you know complaining about something or talking about my mental health a million times like that's lame right i think the people that actually do suffer from those things are the ones that suffer the most when people who just have a slight bit of inconvenience who meet the one little hurdle in their life automatically wave the fucking depression wave the mental health fucking flag the ones that actually have it are the ones that suffer because you take away the tension from them you take away the resources from them because you just you know you got to work late because you fucking lost your fucking wallet you know what i mean like jog on jog on but i think in general that's sort of like tough you know british english dip up a lip that's sort of like conventional machismo um toxic masculinity thing of like you know pushing all your emotions deep down into your subconsciousness right to the point where it doesn't exist anymore and it only maybe explodes later on down the line when you decide to fucking run your car into a fucking group of fucking pedestrians right that sort of rage is a good thing to keep bottled up because i think as men you're meant to just kind of you know keep it moving one foot in front of the other but i do think there's a beauty in being able to be emotionally open vulnerable um you know with your friends with your other male friends like if you can't do that with your family if you couldn't do that growing up then you owe it to yourself to do it with your friends people you consider your compadres your homies your hombres right your chicos you should do it with them if you can't do it with anybody else so i saw this clip and i thought to myself this is incredible because these guys are probably older than me and the lack of emotional um eq the, the lack of emotional intelligence the lack of emotional capacity the lack of maturity in this conversation is startling but it's also quite nice to see because it is representation of what regular guys are like like away from trying to look like they're you know um away from trying to look like they're progressive and evolved and mature online to impress the itches in real life away from all the fucking you know possibilities of whatever impressing girls and stuff this is how actual boys actually talk and this again should be an example for all the women or all the men out there who are wondering to themselves why is my partner unable to like express emotions why can't they tell me they love me why can't they talk about how they feel or their plans for the future whatever it may be why are they so emotionally stunted this is the reason why because day to day you're hanging out with guys we're hanging out with guys who have the emotional range of a fucking you know i don't know the emotional range of what what's a good example they have the <laughs> emotional range the emotional capacity they have the emo they have the emotional range of a mini fucking mcflurry you know the, not, not the big one the mini mcflurry you know that mini mcflurry after like two three spoons it's already gone that's the that's the lack of emotional range that they have i tell you it's absolutely wonderful to see so i'm going to show you right now what i mean and then you're going to see wagwan with the situation let me show you what i'm talking about let me show you because this video legit made me laugh hey yo big up um nerd affiliate leave us adult pj shoppers alone <laughs> ha -ha -ha. unless papa starts doing it hey yo smiley face big up nerd affiliate appreciate you thank you for the super chat yo big up my guy rodeo brito wagwan bang your fucking chest bodybuilder news what's good bang your chest eddie d what's good bang your chest Oh, uh, and a guy, what's this called? Oh, Magico. What's going on with Magico? Anyway, let me show you what emotional range doesn't look like. That was um very touching, yeah. My mom reminded me that I never had a disc. <laughs> so I did my revisions for sets on the stairs. <laughs> but I don't remember it. She was like, yeah, like it was, it was weird because every time I'm walking, everyone's walking past you, you're just on the stairs revising for your test. Have you ever done a dining table? <laughs> you have never you know, sat around the dining table no, and eating food. No, I get that. You've got a dining table. There's no dining table in your house, bro. 
Yeah. In the kitchen? There's no dining table. <laughs> you don't eat in the kitchen. Everyone goes to their bedroom or everyone goes in the living room. Why are you revising your bedroom? Because my bedroom was my sister and my brother and my auntie as well. I'm talking about my old house. Oh, okay. I moved to Rath when I was 16, so I've already done my set. Oh, okay. You're talking about when I was like 11. So I was revising on the stairs. So Mia's now got a desk, chair. It was very like, rah, you've actually got a desk and chair. No, she's not <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I didn't have that. I just lay down on the bed with my feet in the air, bro. Reading this AQA book. I don't remember where I revised from. Yeah, now my mum reminded me. I don't remember either. There's, there's certain there's bare memories I've just like forgotten about. So my mum reminds me. Oh, snap. That's fucking hilarious, right? That's hilarious because number one, I kind of understand this guy's lack of interest and, you know, um, lack of, you know, emotional vulnerability when his boy is kind of pouring his heart out about how hard it was growing up revising back in the day in a house where there was no desk, right? I can't understand why, because sometimes as dudes, especially guys from ENDS, especially immigrants, right? Especially minorities, we do sometimes have a tendency to eulogize or to sometimes lionize our struggle. We sometimes love to talk about it with almost poverty tinted glasses. We want that fucking, what's that movie with Will Smith where he's trying to fucking make it? You know, whatever that fucking movie is, right? We all kind of want that sort of storyline. We all want this kind of like, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, you know, got it from the mud type of story. And we want to make out that we were really poor. Yeah, pursue your happiness, that we were really poor. We were really down bad when really we, would, we weren't really that poor. We really weren't that bound down bad. And we didn't really have nothing because nowadays, especially now you're older or now that we're older and you have jobs and stuff, you have relationships, you have your own families, you know what having nothing looks like. You have way more life experiences. You know what nothing looks like. But when you think about how you used to act back in the day or how you used to interpret your situation, you'd maybe think you were poor just because your mum didn't buy you a PlayStation, which is dumb because imagine if you've got siblings. You live in a household with like two, three, four, five siblings and you're expecting your parents to give you a PlayStation just for you and then to get your brothers and sisters their own gifts. It's like, bro, of course you didn't get a PlayStation for your, for your birthday because, you know, they couldn't fucking afford it because there's five other mouths to feed. That doesn't mean you're poor. doesn't mean you had nothing. It just means they couldn't get it for you at that moment. Maybe they might have got it for you two years down the line, uh, one year down the line. You might have to buy it secondhand or something, but eventually you got it. So I do understand we sometimes like to, you know, put our struggle or our pain on the pedestal. We want to kind of, again, maybe Monday, Monday morning quarterback our fucking hustle. I understand where it can be sometimes annoying. But in this instance, in this instance, these young men, they look kind of old. This guy looks like he might be what, early 40s? Maybe he might be one of those guys that looks like he's younger, but he might be actually 50. They're way too old to not be able to have a mature conversation around these type of things. Now, I don't. I didn't see the context. This this is like a 50 minute, 50 second clip. They could have been, big up Wingus McDingus. Big up has, big up chat. <laughs> me, I, I can take, take a, a hiatus. hiatus. Me, I can take a hiatus. Woo! Me, I can take a hiatus. Swag, me, I can take a hiatus. Woo! Yo, big up Wingus McDingus, appreciate you. Um, they're way too old. They're way too old not to be able, or he's looked way too old, not to be able to put his fork down and just have a conversation with his boy about this, you know, point in his life, this this kind of like fork in the road moment, this kind of pivotal moment that his mum reminded him of that's making him appreciative of what he has now. Like, oh my God, look how far I've come. There was a time in my life where I used to have to revise on the fucking stairs. They're way too old for it. And of course, the second point, which I have to make, I don't want to make it, but I have to make it. This guy's eating fucking Chinese on a podcast. Who eats during a podcast? I don't, I've never understood it personally for me. I look at low cows a lot, right? Wing, Wings of Redemption is a big one that I kind of check out. And of course, the Hassan Abbey guy, who a lot of people online don't like. One of the things that I don't like about Hassan, even though I don't, I don't mind his streams, even though he has weird fucking opinions about politics and about the world and stuff, and he's a bit of a raging hypocrite. That aside, his streams are pretty hard to watch because he decides to just eat midstream and i'm thinking to myself isn't there a time before the stream or after the stream where you can eat or if you're really ravished isn't there a possibility where you can just play a video and then just eat off camera 
or at least turn the mic off? Why do you have to slob on your fucking munch, on your rice, on your chicken, on your noodles, and fucking lick that shit into a microphone? Wings of Redemption does it, who's nearly 500 pounds, right? A complete, like, overweight, obese monster. And Hassan Albi does it, who's relatively in good shape. So it's not like a fat thing. It's just like some guys like to sit in front of a mic midstream and just start eating. Now, if you're doing a cooking show and you, you're, you know, you're sampling some of the stuff that you're cooking and whatever it may be, or you're going to restaurants, that's completely different. I know what I'm watching. But if I'm watching you doing a podcast where you're talking about, hey, um, should guys pay for the first day? <laughs> did that time I went to the club and I got a table? Oh my God, did you hear Heady One's new single? If I'm listening to you talking about all these topics, I don't want to suddenly mid- episode hear you slobbering on fucking what is it um fucking chow meng right and if i'm not mistaken that looks like sweet and sour chow meng this guy might be in his early 40s and he's eating lunch of a fucking 16 year old who still eats sweet and sour chow meng when you're over the age of fucking 17 that's absolutely insane on the podcast too and you have and you don't have the ability to put your fucking fork down seal that little plastic container up and say to your boy oh man that's that's fucked up man how do you feel about that and have some level of emotional fucking run you know equal some sort of electrical connection something what's the fucking term isn't it like um uh, lack of emotional fucking range or emotional intelligence isn't it like um elexi theme find me or something like that elexi something right so it's, it's like a it's like a diagnosis people have right a condition where they're unable to have any kind of emotional capacity or whatever it may be right they can't relate to you it's kind of bordering on that kind of sociopathy psychopathy kind of level right so maybe there is a possibility that he may actually get in his fucking range Rover sport and mow down some pedestrians when he doesn't feel like you know living one day but come on brother if somebody's having this moment where they're actually opening up to you maybe just put your fucking knife and fork down and talk i never understood the whole eating thing on the thing it's very very bizarre but i also think i'm going too far i don't think it's all of those things i just think this is a condition known as bad man this is a condition known as bad man this is a condition known as bad man don't dance, bad man don't laugh too much, bad man are never that too happy, bad man don't hug, right? Like, this is one of those kind of connections, you know what I mean? So in this kind of range, bad man don't show that they, their feelings are hurt, right? You just got to, like, bottle up and, and act like it's nothing. Nah, it's something, bro. The reason why he doesn't remember, it's like me. I don't remember some of my traumatic experiences in life. Why? Because they were traumatic. That's why I don't remember them. I do what every other guy does and I, you know, like on a Windows PC, I'll partition that shit. Is it partitioning, right? On Windows, there's a thing that you can do where you can partition the hard drive. That's what I do, bruv. I'll partition that shit. That shit goes over there. I don't fucking remember that shit anymore. All men do that. But guess what? It's not healthy. It's not good. When you're older, you should probably, like myself, seek some fucking psych psychological help. You probably should go to a therapist or do some sort of self-work. Obviously, we don't do it and we wait until it reaches the fucking end point when we're in the middle of a fucking Asda screaming into the sky and punching cell systems before we get some help. But still, the point remains. You're clearly, you're clearly going through something. That's why you decide to fucking, you know, control, own it, delete your fucking memory. You know you what you're going through. So you would expect a little bit more of a, you know, some sort of a, some sort of range there. But in this case, it doesn't make any sense. Let's play it one more time because this might be one of the most hilarious videos I've ever fucking seen. This lack of emotional range with these type of people, especially given how old they look, is fucking bizarre. They're acting like 17-year-olds when they've probably both got kids, mortgages, you know, big group of, you know, a uh, big family, big group of friends, responsibilities. And here they are unable, unable to emote, unable to connect, unable to, uh, you know, have any kind of sensible grown up conversation. This is fucking brilliant. One more time with this video. One thing that was um, very touching, yeah. My mum reminded me that I never had a disc. <laughs> so I did my revisions for sets on the stairs. To be, to be fair too, isn't this quite normal? I don't, I don't think we didn't we had a dining table in my house and we were we weren't we didn't have much money we were we were kind of poor as well everybody in ends is poor when everybody in ends is poor no one's really poor because you're all on the same sort of level right you're all fucking sharing sandwiches you're all going to each other's houses because if one person doesn't have a games console one person does so you just go to that person's house to go play like it's not that deep and usually the mums know wagwan 
So if they see somebody looking a bit ratty, they you know they'll 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 with um, with grace and dignity they'll help them out, whatever it may be. You know what I mean, like everyone just helps each other out. There isn't no really. Do you know what I mean the, the the richest person in ends is probably the kid that can afford an actual legit Nike tracksuit from fucking Foot Locker or JD Sports. That might be the richest person, but everybody's kind of on the same level. So I think most people didn't really have tables. They did have a table. It was like a dining room table. But again, the other issue is if you've grown up in an Asian in a black or in a Caribbean household, even some of my Hispanic people out there, you will know if your mom has a dining table, most likely she won't let you do your homework on there. Or if she does, she'll make you fucking put a mat on top of the table so you don't mark it up. Like your mom isn't going to let you just use the dining room table to do your homework and to start fucking, you know, marking shit with your Stabilo Boss highlighter. That's not going to happen. So she will actually tell you, no, go revise on your fucking bed. You're not fucking getting your dirty marks or your big pen biro all over my table. So most people in ends didn't have tables. And if you did have a table... Your mum didn't let you use it anyway, you know? So we all had to work from the from the bedroom. It's not that big of a deal. Like, I think most people even nowadays probably... I bet you most people, most people nowadays probably use their laptops in bed anyway. I bet most people spend the majority of their time browsing on their smartphone, on their laptops, in bed, lying down, on the side. Like, that's just what people do. Like, it's not that big of a deal, really. But I don't remember it. She was like, yeah, like, it was, it was weird because every time I'm walking, everyone's walking past you, you're just on the stairs revising for your test. <laughs> Imagine having him as a brother. Imagine having him as a brother. You're trying to fucking twang your mum to let you out and he's on the stairs revising. Like, come on, man, you fucking meek, man. Stop, stop showing us up. Let's do some madness. Let's do some badness, bro. You're here on the on the stairs, like doing your fucking equations and shit, trying to pass your fucking accounting degree while we're trying to twang mum to let us out. We're trying to fucking manipulate, you know, and you know, and fucking uh, <laughs> gaslight our mums to try and let us out. And you're there on the stairs, fucking solving, you know, doing fucking Pythagoras theorem shit. Like, come on, man. We didn't dining table. We have never. <laughs> Sat around the dining table no, and eating food. No, I get that. To be fair, I think most black families don't have dining tables. I, I, honestly, it's not a good thing because I think, you know, I grew up in a family where we had a dining table, but we didn't really use it to revise. And when we when we ate as a family, we'd eat in one room, but we'd all have a little tray. We had a little like, you know, like a, you know, like Americans have that, you know how Americans have that like fat person tray? that little thing that they have the fat person tray you see a lot in my 500 pound life like they kind of waddle in the fucking room with a little tray right or they have like a little cart thing we would have one of those and you just kind of sit eating that and that was jokes back in the day i only realized later on that in life that that was like a thing that obese people have when they waddle in so they can have all their fucking shit in one plate i mean the fucking mac and cheese the burgers the pizzas all in one plate waddling in and the big fucking glass of fucking orange aid you got a dining table there's no dining table in my house, bro. In the kitchen. There's no dining table. You don't eat in the kitchen. <laughs> to be fair, the kitchen was a bit of a vibe. In my house, the kitchen was a place where you could kind of like, you know, gather your thoughts, chill. There was, I wouldn't say privacy, but there was some level of like, you know, you could be, after, after people cooked, no one really hung out in the kitchen. So you could kind of do your own thing chill you know look out look out through the window and see nothing because there was a fucking you know a fence there but still you kind of could see the outside wall by just sitting on the inside you know everyone goes to their bedroom or everyone goes in the living room why are you revising your bedroom because my bedroom was my sister and my brother and my auntie <laughs> yo sleeping in the bedroom with your sister and your auntie is real poverty he might have grown up actually poor though i'm not gonna lie he might actually have a real reason to tell this story because of his come up like he might be really doing well for himself now so he has a reason to pat himself on the back sleeping in a bedroom with your sister and your auntie is wild like so what is that a bunk so like what, what your mum and your sister your auntie and your sister are in the bunk bed and where are you on the floor are you like in a are you like in a tent? Are you like on a futon? Are you got like a foldable bed? Like what are you doing? That's wild, bro. Especially because they're two women, two girls too. So what? You basically can't be in there most of the time. You just have to just go in there and sleep. <laughs> and then just like leave. <laughs> As well. I'm talking about my old house. Oh, okay. I moved to Rast when I was 16, so I've already done my sets. Oh, okay. I'm talking about when I was like 11. <laughs> he's he can't honestly if you're gonna be a, if you're gonna if you're gonna eat chicken chow mein on a podcast you then can't have bits falling out of your mouth 
Especially when you're in your forties. I've already done my sets. Oh, okay. Man's got like bits falling out of his mouth eating chicken chow mein. And also, if you're over 40 years old, you can't eat chicken chow mein on a podcast and you can't wear your do-rag like that. You can't look like, um, what's his name? Is it Guap Dad? Um, or who's that other guy? Who's that rapper that came up with fucking, um, who came up with um, Excess Tentacion, who wears it to the side? You can't do that when you're over 40. You can't wear your do-rag to the side like that. Like you got a little fucking... You know, like you got a little dangling hair there. That's not it. That's only for the young kids. Only kids under 20 can wear their do-rags like this. When you're over 40, you, you just wear a classic sort of like R&B little scully thing, right? That's all you wear, that, that kind of Tyrese hat. But you can't wear a do-rag. You can't wear a do-rag and you can't eat chicken chow mein on the fucking podcast. We got that right? Cool. Let's go. You're talking about when I was like 11. So I was rising on the stairs. So Mia's now got a desk chair. So it's very like, rah, you've actually got a desk and chair. Next level. <laughs> <laughs> Next level. He's just got his head down the entire time. Next level. As he's eating his chicken chow mein with a fork, by the way. No chopsticks, no sides, no sauce, right? No fucking anything. Just just straight box of chicken chow mein. Or like, no, or sweet and sour chow mein, it looks like. Can you imagine, bro? Can you imagine ordering? Like, imagine your lack of fucking taste buds. Imagine your limited fucking, you know, palate of fucking food that you eat. That you're sitting there eating chicken, like sweet and sour chicken chow mein or whatever. It, ch chow mein just in general. Can you imagine how much you don't fucking explore your taste buds or culinary delights out there that the only thing you order is that? Fuck me. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't have that. I had to just lay down on the bed with my feet in the air, bro. Reading this AQA book. I don't even remember where I revised. Yeah, my mum reminded me. I don't remember either. I don't even remember why I revised. Yeah, because you probably didn't revise. <laughs> like the rest of us. We probably we all didn't revise. These guys are doing what they're doing. Emotional range is on minus fucking zero. It is what it is. Um, there's nothing else you can fucking add on to it. I just found it incredibly, incredibly funny that his bro, his boy is pouring his heart out, pouring his heart out. And this guy's out here saying, yeah, that's mad. Yo, that's mad, you know? Wow, really? What? So what? You, you man didn't have a table? You man didn't have a table? No? All right, cool, 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 cool. No, nah, that's, that's mad still. What? You guys didn't have a table? That's fucking mad. What? What? <laughs> it's like, do you have anything more to say, sir? Apart from that's mad. Apart from raw. Do you have anything more to say, sir? Any more syllables? Any more words? Any more phrases? Any more sayings? Or is that it? Okay, cool. Great. Good to know. Good to fucking know. All right. Okie dokie. Let's continue because I've got many more things here that I want to talk to you about. If you're watching the show live and you're enjoying what you're seeing, you see what you like, you like what you see, right? and you're a fucking friend of the blacks, you are a compadre of the IC Freeze, right? You're respectful of MLK Day, MLK Day that just passed. I think the, our version of MLK Day is probably going to be Benjamin Zephaniah Day, right? RIP to him. That's probably our version of fucking MLK Day. Or, or when fucking Lenny Henry dies, we'll probably celebrate him, right? But if you're out there and you're a fucking fan of the blacks, right? And you want to show solidarity, you know what you should do? Like the fucking stream. That's it. If you're not a fan of the Blacks, then of course, you know, unlike the stream, that's perfectly okay. I'm perfectly okay with fucking discrimination based on color of my skin and my race. I think that's perfectly fine. <laughs> if I can hate you for the choice of shoes you wear and for your awful haircuts, right? And your choice of ugly mates and your really horrible looking kids, then you can also hate me for the color of the skin that I not choose to get born in. It's perfectly fine around here. Casual racism, perfectly fine. Perfectly fucking fine. So <laughs> big up everybody that's tuning in. Appreciate you all. Always, always, always appreciate you. And we just continue 